The frequency with which House managers relied on unproven media reports shocked me as I sat in this chamber and listened to this. And there's a lot that we don't know yet about what happened that day. According to those around him at the time, reportedly responded, Trump reportedly reports across all major media outlets, major news networks, including Fox News, reported, reported, reportedly summoned, reportedly, reportedly not accidental. According to reports, <clears throat> President Trump was reportedly, who reportedly spoke to the guard. And was widely reported. Media reports? According to reports, reported, reportedly. As any trial lawyer will tell you, reportedly is a euphemism for, I have no real evidence. Reportedly is not the standard in any American setting in which any semblance of due process is afforded and accused. Consider these facts. The House managers, proud of their work on the SNAP impeachment, staged numerous photo shoots of their preparations. In one of those, manager Raskin is seen here at his desk reviewing two tweets side by side. The image on his screen claims to show that President Trump had retweeted one of those tweets. Now, members of the Senate, let's look closely at this screen, because obviously, manager Raskin considered it important enough that he invited the New York Times to watch him watching it. Now, what's wrong with this image? Actually, there are three things very wrong with it. Look at the date on the very bottom of the screen on manager Raskin's computer screen when we zoom in to the picture. The date that appears is January 3rd, 2020, not 2021. Why is that date wrong? Because this is not a real screenshot that he's working with. This is a recreation of a tweet, and you got the date wrong when you manufactured this graphic. You did not disclose that this is a manufactured graphic and not a real screenshot of a tweet. Now, to be fair, the House managers caught this error before showing the image on the Senate floor. So you never saw it when it was presented to you. But that's not all. They didn't fix this one. Look at the blue check mark next to the Twitter username of the account retweeted by the president. It indicates that this is a verified account given the blue check by Twitter to indicate it is run by a public figure. The problem? The user's real account is not verified and has no blue check mark, as you can see. Were you trying to make her account seem more significant, or were you just sloppy? If we had due process of law in this case, we would know the truth. But that's not all that's wrong with this one tweet. House Manager Swalwell showed you this tweet this week, and he emphasized that this tweet reflected a call to arms. He told you repeatedly that this was a promise to call in the cavalry for January 6th. He expressly led you to believe that President Trump's supporter believed that the president wanted armed supporters at the January 6th speech, paramilitary groups, the cavalry, ready for physical combat. The problem is, the actual text is exactly the opposite. The tweeter promised to bring the Calvary, a public display of Christ's crucifixion, a sem central symbol of her Christian faith, with her to the president's speech, a symbol of faith, love, and peace. They just never want to seem to read the text and believe what the text means. You'll see this reported in the media last evening also. Words matter, they told you, but they selectively edited the president's words over and over again. They manipulated video, time-shifting clips, and made it appear the president's words were playing to a crowd when they weren't. Let's take a look. After this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down to Any the Capitol. You want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. 
We have come to demand that Congress do the right thing and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated, lawfully slated. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. And we are going to walk down to the Capitol. They showed you that part. Why are we walking to the Capitol? Well, they cut that off. To cheer on some members of Congress, and not others, peacefully and patriotically. The Supreme Court ruled in Brandenburg that there's a very clear standard for incitement. In short, to paraphrase, whether the speech was intended to provoke imminent lawless action, and was it likely to do so. Go to the Capitol and cheer on some members of Congress, but not others. They know it doesn't meet the standard for incitement, so they edited it down. We heard a lot this week about fight like hell, but they cut off the video before they showed you the President's optimistic, patriotic words that followed immediately after. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Our exciting adventures and boldest endeavors have not yet begun. My fellow Americans, for our movement, for our children, and for our beloved country. And I say this, despite all that's happened, the best is yet to come. There's that famous quote, like one of the House managers said, a lie will travel halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to put its shoes on. Well, this lie traveled around the world a few times, made its way into the Biden campaign talking points, and ended up on the Senate floor. The Charlottesville lie. Very fine people on both sides. Except that isn't all he said. And they knew it then, and they know it now. Watch this. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now we're going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits, and with the helmets, and with the baseball bats. You, got a, you, had a lot of bad, you had a lot of bad people in the other group, too. Well, the press treated unfairly, sir. I'm sorry, I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly? No, I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look, there were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day, it looked like they had some rough, bad people, neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this, there are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. But there are two sides to the country. Does anybody have a final? Does anybody have, you have an infrastructure. What makes you think? This might be today the first time the news networks played those full remarks in their context. And how many times have you heard that President Trump has never denounced white supremacists? Now you in America know the truth.